Okay, this is section 10.2, and it's on the chi-square test for independence. And this is, you would use this any time somebody wants to see if one variable is independent of another. Now, this same data was done clear back in chapter 3, one of the first things we did. It says the table below gives the observed number of males and females in four different math classes, Math 102, 105, Statistics, and Math 90. And here's their gender, male or female. Here's the total uh, in each of the classes, and here's the total number of males, 80, total number of females, 95. The grand total of number of people sampled is 175. And we want to see if, if uh, your class that you take is independent of your gender. Okay, so to do this, this chi-square test for independence, you would go to the Excel sheet and go to the chi-square test for independence. And we would get our data, and it's on the data sheet, and I copied and pasted it into uh, this area right here. And what it does is it gets the expected values, and the way it gets the expected values if they were independent of each other is explained in the textbook, but really it's just the row, row total times the column total over the ground total. So really this 13.714 was calculated by taking the total number um, right here, which is 80, row total, times the column total, which is 30, 80 times 30 divided by the grand total, 175. And if you do that, you'll get this expected number in right here in this uh, uh, cell 1 here, which is row 1, column 1 of the expected. Now, sometimes you'll have a question that says, what is E of, let's say, E of 1, 2, E 1, 2. E 1, 2 means the expected value in row 1, column 2. So that would be 18.28, and you can see that explained right here. When they talk about E11, this is E11, the expected value in row 1, column 1. This is the expected value in row 1, column 2, and that's these values here. See, here's E12, E13, E14, E21, E22, E23, E24, and you could have more, as many as there, there are. Now, you really shouldn't run this test unless all these expected values is, are greater than 5, then it's approximately normally distributed. You can use the chi-square test on this thing. And then it calculates the chi-square test statistic by doing it the same way it did before, by taking these expected values, uh, minus your observed, and squaring them, and divided by the um, expected value. And then it adds all these up, and when it adds all these up here, that is your test statistic right there your uh, chi-square test statistic. The critical value is looked up, and actually it's the number of rows minus 1. Number of rows minus 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. Number of groups minus 1, well, there's 4 groups. 4 groups minus 1 is 3. Then you would take 3 times 1, and you get 3 degrees of freedom. And actually, the graph of this chi-square test is right here as well. And you can see this is the rejection region. And our test statistic is way out there at 20 point something. So your test statistic is off the chart. So you're definitely going to reject this at uh, almost any alpha level. Let's see, this point triple zero one two. So you could reject this clear down to the point double zero one. So the null is that the variables are independent. And the alternate is that the variables are dependent. You always summarize in terms of the alternate hypothesis. So since we rejected the null, we're able to show that the variables are dependent. What does that mean about this particular problem? Well, at the point double zero one alpha level, we're able to show that the math course that you sign up for is dependent upon your gender. And that's what this data shows us for this problem. And so hopefully you, you see where this is coming from here. You can see the graph. And I went clear out to the point oh one. If you wanted to see this, maybe you might want to look at this graph. Oh, from let's say 14 to 21. And there you can see that rejection region right there, all in red. And there's your test statistic that falls out in there, even at the point oh oh one alpha level. So uh, you can see the chi-square distribution here. Just like back here, I think the chi-square distribution was right here when we were in section 10.1. It shows you the graph of it. So uh, that's a nice little thing there. And I think that's everything to do with uh, the chi-square test. And uh, so we'll stop there, and we'll do go on to the next section in the next video.